So in our lab, we study the complex interactions between microbes, host, and uh, pharmacological compounds, like drugs that we take for treating disease. And we try to understand how one impacts the other and how that regulates physiology. The gut is home to a vast number of microbes, known as the microbiome, and they regulate most aspects of human physiology in health and disease. These microbial communities are directly influenced by many lifestyle factors, particularly diet and medication. These factors ultimately affect microbial function and consequently the health of its host. But how nutrition influences the ability of the microbiome to change the response of the host to its environment is only poorly understood, up until now. The difficulty in understanding such interactions stems from the nutrient complexity that exists in the food we eat, and their possible direct effects on the host and indirect effects through the microbiome. Similarly, drugs can also have direct effects on the host and indirect effects through the microbiome. So how do we break this complex conundrum and dissect what is happening at a molecular level? We devised a four-way high-throughput screen. The drug metformin was chosen as it's known to impact on the microbiome and is used to treat conditions such as type 2 diabetes and ageing. Food is molecularly complex, so it's broken down into individual nutrient elements that cover all major nutrient classes in our diets. The bug E. coli is present in the gut of most healthy humans and is strongly associated with positive effects of metformin. And the host, the nematode worms C. elegans, a great molecular tool that allows us to study the effects of metformin on processes that exist in humans. Using a genetically engineered worm that glows green in response to metformin administration, we screened hundreds of nutrients that would either switch off this fluorescent gene if it impaired the action of the drug, or further increase the fluorescence if that nutrient enhanced how metformin worked. So what did we discover using this novel screening approach? Like human cells, E. coli and other human gut microbes have sophisticated systems to understand signals from their environment. We found that metformin could turn on a transcription factor called CRP in bacteria. The activity of CRP is controlled by nutrients commonly found in our food, and it regulates the expression of hundreds of genes that help adapt metabolism accordingly. We observed that sugars shut down this activation induced by metformin, while amino acids and other nitrogen-containing compounds support this activation. So what about humans? Based on the intriguing results in worms, we set out to investigate whether we could confirm these findings also in the much more complex microbiota of humans. Thus, we collected microbiome samples and dietary information from a large cohort of human diabetic patients and healthy controls. Using a metabolic modeling approach, we found that also in humans treated with metformin, the microbiome showed an increased capacity to produce agmatin, and this finding could be confirmed across several cohorts uh, in Europe. So what are the implications of this study? We can now develop or find new drugs targeting signaling pathways of many microbial members, forcing them to produce key molecules for host health. Using a synthetic biology approach, we can tweak signaling pathways in microbes to produce specific metabolites. And finally, using a molecular nutrition approach, we can optimise how current drugs function by adapting the diet of the host. So our data critically highlights that we cannot fully understand the effects of drugs on host physiology if we study separately the effects of either the host, the drugs, or its nutritional environment, or even the pairwise interactions between these different components.